If there is something that I have learned through coaching dozens of companies is that even if every business is different, most of them, if not all, need just four main systems. In fact, I have yet to see a business that doesn't need one of them. So that is what we are going to be covering in this video. Let's get into it. System number one is going to be project management. So first of all, why we need it? Well, even if we are a solopreneur, aka we do everything by ourselves, we need some sort of way to manage our tasks and projects. Because for running our business, it's essential that we have that bird's eye view to know what's on our plate. Because it is virtually impossible to have everything in our brains, the tasks, the due dates, the different projects we are working on. And if we default to use our brains for this, we will end up probably not working in the highest leverage and highest priority tasks, just in the most urgent. And if you are somehow familiar with the Eisenhower matrix, you know that what's urgent and not important should be delegated. So by having a project management system, we will be able to sort through the chaos and really focus on the highest leverage activities. Okay, so how will this system look like? Well, so here I have the dashboard for a company and over here I have two databases, the projects and the tasks of the company. If you've been following me, you know that I like to keep out my systems really simple. So I think this as simple as it can get. And of course, these two databases are going to be related. We can see here the relation to the company's projects database. And if the company that you're running have more than one person, it will be very useful that you set the projects database in the timeline view and that in this left column, you show which is the project owner of each of the projects. Why? Because like this, it will be very easy just at a glance to see who is working on what and if one of your employees or yourself have too many projects going on at the same time. And then in terms of the assignee, I have decided to create a new database just to store the people in my company. But feel free to use the person property if you, if you want to. But I have chose to create this in a new database because like this, I will be able to go into each of the employees dashboards and by using the filters, I will be able to see what each of the employees has going on. And of course, this is the view that each of the employees are going to use in a daily basis to know what they need to do. Okay, but if we have just projects and tasks, it will be quite difficult to know if those projects are bringing our business closer to where we want to go. So for this, we need a second system, which is the OKR system. OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results. And they are basically the vision of the company, where the company is going. The objectives are going to be written in plain English, and then the key results are the ones that are measurable. And under each objective, we will have as many key results as we need in order to complete that objective. So this means if we have completed all the key results, we will certainly say that we have achieved that objective. Okay, so for this system, we will also have two databases, as we can see here, one for the objectives and one for the key results. And of course, they are both linked. So in this example over here, for the objective, make our company go viral, we will have these three key results. So this means if I achieve these three, I would have achieved this one. Now, as the key results are always quantifiable, what we can do is to create these two properties, which is the current value of the key result and which is the goal that we want to achieve. And then by using this formula, we can represent this visually. Don't worry, I'm gonna copy this formula in the description of this video. But the magic of this system is not the system itself, which it is, but it's the process that we are gonna go through in order to fill this out. Because first, we're gonna have to think about all of our objectives and then about the key results. And this is gonna give us a lot of insights and understanding of where we want our business to go. And if we really want to supercharge this system, we can also link the key results to the projects over here. Why would we do that? Because you know that I don't like to create more complexity, but I think this is quite useful because this way we will be able to, every time that we come up with a project that we may do, we will have to link it to a key result. So if we find that this project is not going to help any of our key results move forward, probably we shouldn't be taking on this project. Or conversely, if we had several key results and one of them doesn't have any project that is helping that key result to move forward, probably we have to think of something that we can do so we can help that key result to be achieved. But now, if our company has some kind of relationships with people from outside of the company and our company depends on that, Probably we need this third system, which is the CRM system. This is by far the most requested system that my clients are always asking me about. 
and their need comes from them missing out on some opportunities because they didn't have any reminder to follow up with a potential client or to better serve actual clients. And this system is also going to have two different databases, one for storing the people itself and another one for storing the meeting notes. Of course, both are related as you can see over here. So here we will be able to see all the meeting notes that we have for a particular person. And once we have this relation, if we create this rollup, we will be able to bring the meeting date property and calculate when was the latest date that we contact this person. Then we will be able to set the frequency that we want to contact this person, which then we are going to translate into its numerical form. So if this is monthly, this is gonna be 30. If this is quarterly, this is gonna be 90. If this is yearly, this is gonna be 365. This is completely customizable, of course, with this formula over here. And then we are just going to compare this property over here, in this case, eight days ago, with 30. So if this is smaller than this one, the output is gonna be that we are still friends. This is the formula over here, if you want to copy it. And then, as you can imagine, we can use the result of this property to just filter out those people that we need to reach out immediately. And we can have them in our personal dashboard or whatever. So like this, we will never forget to follow up with any prospective client or any other person that we want to. If you're interested to know more in depth about my CRM system, you can find the video over here in which I go much more in detail. And then finally, companies have a lot of information that they are continuously processing. And if we don't have a good system to have everything organized, we may start to lose stuff and what is worse, if we don't find something that we need, we may need to recreate it with the consequent loss of time that, that this is going to bring us. So this fourth system is a knowledge management system, which is one of the least sexy of all, but one of the most useful. So the way that I have set up this system is very easy. Here, let's say that this company needs to store SOPs. So what we are going to be building is just one simple database, in this case, a gallery view, because Personally, I like how these images look and it's also a very good way to, to see visually how many SOPs we have per app, in my case, and then just by tagging them by the department of each of these SOPs. So what this is going to allow us is that even if this is the full repository of all our SOPs, then if we create, a, let's say, a marketing dashboard, we can just embed everything that is related to marketing, for example, like this. Just by using this filter, we can just see everything that is related to marketing. And of course, this can be extrapolated to invoices for the finance department, to flowcharts for the operations department, and we can create different dashboards for the different departments. And also what is good about this is that all this information is already searchable. And if we commit to just using Notion for this, then I am sure that we will never lose anything again. Then of course, apart from these four systems, we can build more business dependent systems that probably not every business will need, but some businesses do, such as an inventory management, sales manager, a finance tracker, but I have found that these four are the essential, the core, la creme de la creme of all the businesses that I have worked with. So if you're currently running a business and you found yourself a little bit overwhelmed with the systems that you need to create, I hope that this video gave you the clarity to get started. And if you find stuck and need my help, I'm gonna leave in the description of this video a form where you can input your contact details and I can try to help you out. So that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.